Today is Thursday, so we talk about success for Scrum Masters. We've been sharing success stories here on the podcast since 2015, so there's a lot to learn. But uh, wouldn't you like to learn from people with decades of experience? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. The Scrum Master Toolbox podcast launched Tips from the Trenches, the Scrum Master Edition audiobook. That's version 2 now out. There are 13 audio interviews, 3 hours of audio with Scrum Masters that have decades of experience. We've got Mike Cohn, Linda Rising, Lisa Crispin, Christopher Avery, Emily Weber, myself, your podcast host, Yves Hanul, the editor of the original Tips from the Trenches ebook, also available with the audiobook. Altogether, 13 super experienced Scrum Masters. To learn more, visit bit.ly forward slash audio tips 2. That's bit.ly forward slash a u d i o t i p s and the numeral 2 at the end, all lowercase, all one word. So, one more time, that's bit.ly forward slash audio tips 2 to learn more. And now, on to today's show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday this week with Jakob Jurkiewicz. Hi, Jakob. Welcome back. Hey, Vasco. So, Jakob, on Thursdays, we talk about the success definition. But before we go there, we talk about the tool we very often use to get to a successful outcome, which is, of course, the retrospective. So share with us, what's your favorite retrospective format and why? Okay. It is, it is a hard question because most of the time I try to tailor the retrospective format to the to whatever the team needs. But I think one of the, the most interesting formats that I used was when I wanted to nudge the team towards self-management and towards better understanding of Scrum events. And I wanted them to take a bit of ownership of, of the retrospective. Um, so what I did is, is I booked a large room and we moved all the tables to the side. So we had... The, the middle of the room was, was free, basically. And we sit together in, in a circle. In the middle of the circle, I put a flip chart, um, flip chart paper where we could take notes of actions. And we started with a, with a check-in uh, and we moved to gathering the highlights and pain points of the sprint. So everyone uh, got post-it notes and some Sharpies and they, they wrote down two post-it notes per person and they they put it into a, into a hat, so we kind of mix them all together. So we, we had two ideas of highlight, one highlight and one, one pay point from every person, put it into a hat. When this was ready, we we started passing the hat in a round robin style from one person to another. And when a person uh, got the hat, uh, she had to draw one post-it from the hat, and she had to facilitate the conversation about this topic for five minutes. Um, and hopefully the Based on the conversation, we would have some actions at the end identified. And this was this was a, a great way to for everyone to be engaged, for everyone to, to have a chance to facilitate part of the retrospective. And at the same time, we are keeping the, the time box of five minutes for the discussions. Uh, it was short enough so that no much preparation from the people in the team um, was needed. And it was pretty safe also for them to actually try it out. Because, you know, all they had to do is to facilitate the conversation for five minutes, which often means, to be honest, sometimes doing nothing. But a, a lot of them kind of stepped up and they, they took part in, in coming up to some resolution or to some actions or to some conclusion. So this approach has generated a lot of very, very new insights and it made everyone take ownership of the, of the improvements. Yes, that was one of the techniques that I used and it was pretty, pretty good. How did you then follow up on, you know, the, the actions you wrote down? Like, how, how did you then implement in the team, as a team, that accountability for that ownership you said was generated? Ah, that's a great question. Because probably, as you know, I'm um, suspecting that's, that's where your question is coming from, is that it's, it's often very hard to get the team to follow up with the actions. So what we did is that at the end, we... We decided to come out to take three actions out of, if I remember correctly, out of that retrospective. So we did a bit of, at the end, we did a bit of discussion which actions would be the, the most impactful for us. And we took three actions. And one of the things that I encourage teams to do is that 
I don't ask one person to volunteer to kind of take ownership of an action. I often ask them to come up with pairs. So a pair owns an action, not just one person, but there is a two people owning an action. And this creates totally different dynamic in the team in terms of improvements, in terms of accountability for them. Because imagine when, when there are two people who wants to make an improvement, let's say that it's you and you and me, Vasco. And let's say I, maybe there an action was to go and talk to someone and ask for help. Let's make it very simple. And if I'm a, a bit more introverted person, I, I don't really feel like going to people or I don't even know how to approach them. Hopefully maybe you will be a bit more, you know, courageous and we could go together and I could learn from you. And uh, also, you know, if you am doing anything, I would hope that you kind of with them, maybe in the middle of a sprint, you will ask me, hey, Jakob, should we go to this person and talk to them? You know, we have this action to, to take ownership of. Uh, and it, it just creates a different dynamic uh, and different kind of ownership. It's not just me and it's not just my action. And maybe I volunteered last Friday in retrospective, but it's middle of a sprint and I don't even remember what it was about and why we wanted to do this. But if there's two of us, there's higher chance that we actually may remember why we why we are doing this and how we can do it. So that's my way to to help the team take ownership and and uh, hold them accountable for their actions. Absolutely, it's a it's a great tip for us because that's definitely one of the things that we need to pay attention to when we get out of a retrospective that the actions don't fall flat on the floor and get forgotten. Yes. So now we turn our attention to success and what that means for you. So Jakob, share with us, what's your definition for success as a Scrum Master? Yeah, sure. Um, to be honest, for a long time, it was I, I would have a problem answering this question, answering in a kind of concise or succinct manner. Um, I would probably have many different examples, but it would be hard to, to have one sentence just to describe it. But fortunately, now we have new Scrum Guide which uh, um, came up with the accountabilities for a Scrum Master. So the new Scrum Guide makes it pretty clear that what a Scrum Master is accountable for is the Scrum team's effectiveness. So I think that's how we can define the success or how we can measure the um, success of a Scrum Master. If the team is becoming more effective, then Scrum Master is successful. And of course, this begs for a question, what does effectiveness mean for the team? Because we often don't even talk about this. We don't reflect on this. And what does effectiveness mean for the organization? And what does it mean for me as a Scrum Master? So this, these are, as you can see, these are all different questions we could be asking. And they could lead to a really, really great discussions and, and conversations. So where I like to start is to ask the team themselves, um, you know, hey team, what does being effective, effective mean to us? What does it mean to you individually? And then for us as a team, what does being effective mean to us? And this could be done as a part of retrospective, where so where we start uh, with defining what effectiveness means to us, and then we reflect how effective we are right now and how or what we could do to be more effective as a team. And on, on the day of release of, of the new Scrum Guide, I actually went to English Dictionary and I, I made sure I understood what effectiveness meant. It means that um, it is being successful in producing a desired result. So again, this begs for another question. Does my team know what a desired result is asked of them? Are we as a team getting enough feedback to, to, be bet to, to better understand the desired result? And how, how would we know if we are successful in producing the desired result? Um, do we know any, you know, leading or lagging indicators that we could be using to, to understand if we are uh, effective? This sounds like a never-ending reflection. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that that, that's, that could be a start point and, and, and keeping us also accountable, you know, and, and giving us many ideas how we could structure refinements and reviews and plannings and retrospectives. Because um, there are also other aspects of, of effectiveness like collaboration, you know, so that we can find synergies in our work and, and be more effective. Trust, um, 
craft of, of what we do. Um, you know, effectiveness could be looked uh, at from the point of, of flow of work, continuous improvements and, and so on and so on. So I think, you know, just bringing the effectiveness into the picture, uh, I think this can open up a lot of different ideas how we can be much more successful as Scrum Masters. Yeah, absolutely. And reflecting on effectiveness is definitely one of those things that we should be doing, as that is what we are there to do, to be effective, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, definitely a, a, a great and inspiring perspective. Thank you for sharing that, Jakob. Thank you. Thank you, Vasco. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about the product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real-life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.